This one is going to be talking about uh, winning strategies to maximize your revenue. And the person that is going to be delivering this talk is uh, none other than uh, Maurice Matthews from Liftoff. So can we please welcome to the stage Maurice. So without further ado, uh, take it away, Maurice. Thank you very much. Can everyone hear me okay? Perfect. Uh, cool. So, um, yeah, thanks everyone for, for joining. Um, uh, today we're going to be discussing the current state of app marketing um, and how you can create winning strategies um, to actually, actually maximize your revenue growth. Um, so, first of all, let's talk about the current state of play. So, many consumers are currently um, pulling back on purchases because of the current bear market. Um, you know, in fact, we've seen that user spending on mobile games has actually dropped year over year for the first time um, ever. So, Q122, um, the spending was around 22.6 billion, um, and this has now dropped by 6% to around 21.2 billion um, in Q1 of this year. So also to mention um, consumer privacy, um, you know, there's new rules and regulations that have come into place, um, which is adding more complexity to user acquisition. So in terms of who I am, so I'm Maurice Matthews. Um, I work at a company called Liftoff, um, and I'm a senior sales manager there. Um, so let's jump straight into it. Um, so, in terms of the agenda for today's session, um, first of all, what I'll do is I'll highlight a few key trends, um, specifically around um, casual gaming. Um, then we'll jump into how game design um, can actually work uh, with creative and UA um, to actually help uh, combat this changing landscape. Um, and then finally, as well, uh, we'll also look into um, IAA optimization, uh, which we're using now to, to help boost ROAS. So I touched on the larger mobile gaming market earlier, but I just want to look into casual gaming um, for now. So um, at the moment, casual games currently account for nearly 39% of US mobile game revenue, and 79% of this is actually um, of iOS downloads, which represents a huge market opportunity um, for, for us. But what you can also see is that competition is actually getting really fierce as well now. So if you look at the top casual games of Q2 22 versus Q2 of 21, um, the gaps between the top games are actually now getting narrower. So last year, if you were a top game, um, you, would have, you would have had more than double uh, revenue share in the market. Now the trend that we're seeing is that a larger revenue share um, is actually going over um, to competition, which again is making it extremely more challenging. Cool. What we're also seeing is that the cost to acquire users is down, um, but acquiring users that will actually drive revenue is actually getting tougher. Um, as you can see, um, day seven ROAS is down by 33% compared to last year, and we're now actually seeing a bigger dip in day 30 ROAS, which also signals more challenges in the longer term. And the picture is pretty similar globally as well. So we all know that the CPI per region will vary quite a lot. Um, you know, usually the tier one markets like North America being the most expensive, um, but then also looking at APAC, EMEA, um, NAR uh, regions, they've got pretty comparable day seven and day 30 ROAS rates. Um, and also LATAM has got lower rates in both categories, um, and each of them have varying success in terms of ROAS performance. So, Obviously, it's a very complex landscape at the moment. So what I want to do is actually jump into, you know, what are the elements that actually make a hit casual game? So to answer this question, 
uh, we basically looked at what all the top US grossing games in the last two years have in common. Um, and there are a few key themes to highlight. So the key thing is that they all rely on elements that actually keep the players invested. And the most notable of uh, these elements is what we call renovation elements. So renovation mechanics are not actually part of the core gameplay, but why do these renovation mechanics actually work so well? And the reason for this is, is because they actually bring gamers an additional sense of progression. So players get to see their progression visually um, when completing a renovation or constructing tasks. So it actually turns out that the idea of cleaning up or getting things done is actually a really powerful motivator for player engagement. And renovation elements basically fit any kind of, of core gameplay, and it doesn't actually affect the balance of core book gameplay too much. So a good example of this is like decorating, um, uh, a decorating permanent or non-permanent buildings um, or various areas. And it's purely cosmetic, um, but it does actually give that additional feeling of progression to players. We're also seeing as well that meta elements are becoming really important um, to this. So traditionally, casual games have all, always been around core gameplay. So, you know, are they easy to learn? Um, you know, is the user getting into the game in the right way? Um, they have to be easy to hop in and out of. Um, you know, users are there to, you know, relax, looking to, to kill a bit of time, spend a bit of time within the, the, the game. Um, and they don't require too much effort um, to actually play um, and enjoy. And the key focus for casual games at the moment um, has been on monetizing the, the core game. So things that they focus on are things like boosters to reduce difficulty, um, continues um, to avoid losses, um, things like extra lives and uh, uh, energy to continue playing. Now we're seeing that meta elements are actually becoming an essential part of casual games. And the key reason for this is due to the, the maturation of, casual, uh, of the casual mobile gaming scene um, and the popularity of hybrid game design. So what we're seeing now is that a lot more mid-core elements um, have found their way into casual games. Um, however, you know, that said, the, the core game um, is still the, the primary focus of casual games, but introducing more meta elements will actually open ways um, to uh, monetize more effectively um, and give the player a more sense of progression um, when they're going through the, the, the game. Um, and you can actually see this um, through the data um, on the slide here. So over sort of, well, the past six years, over 90% of the US uh, top grossing 100 match three puzzle games um, did not actually contain any meta elements. Today, about 70% of the US top 100 match three games have actually adopted um, at least some uh, sort of meta elements as part of their gameplay. So um, a massive trend that we're seeing at the moment um, and really important to um, incorporate into your, uh, into your game. Cool. So why is all of this insight important? Um, and the key reason is, is because you can actually gain a competitive, competitive advantage by understanding what meta elements um, are actually trending at the moment. So new gameplay features can increase player retention, it can broaden appeal, all while opening up new monetization options for your games. So another one of the features that I'd like to call out um, is around um, competitive game features. So before I go into the specific features, um, I'd first like to um, uh, explain um, why certain meta elements actually work well. So what we've got here, um, and it's by a, a, a developed by Game Refinery, which is part of the Liftoff family, um, is what we call a, a motivation um, framework. So this looks at what is it that actually motivates players um, to engage with certain features? And we found that many of the top uh, match threes succeeded by differentiating with new motivational drivers. So, for example, if we look at Fishdom, um, Fishdom's collection slash you know, decoration uh, meta brings an extra motivational angle to compete against the likes of Candy Crush Saga, um, as shown in the graph here. Um, 
what we're basically saying is that fishdom is actually appealing to a wider um, set of motivational drivers and is more likely to lure in new types of players um, that are actually driven more by exploration and expressional uh, motivations. Um, Project Makeover, um, another example, they found success by switching the angle to episodic home design um, and a dress-up approach, which again taps heavily into that customization um, motiva uh, motivation. Um, and another major differentiator as well with these is you know, the avatar system for players. So giving players the option to um, you know, customize um, and give a more sense of you when you're playing the game. So now we're going to look at the competitive um, elements. So in terms of the best performing match three titles such as Candy Crush Saga, um, they've recently started to increase um, competitive elements within their games. And this has resulted in a higher appeal to, again, motivating players. So there's a clear differentiating factor between the best performing titles versus other games in the Match 3 universe and indicating that top games are acting on this new trend. So... <clears throat> The question is, does this only apply to game design or can we also leverage this when we're looking at UA and marketing activities? Um, and the answer is that absolutely, yes, we can. So as you can see on this creative scorecard, um, there's a huge untapped opportunity um, that you can leverage. So what we found is that um, to deliver better UA campaigns, um, you need to use um, gameplay uh, insights. So. Um, as you can see, only 4% of ads actually achieve their motivational potential, scoring a 3.38 um, or above. And you can really use this to gain some competitive advantage. So the key question is then, is how do you actually do it? Um, how do you actually align your creatives um, with the actual gameplay experience? Um, this is a, there's a proven way to improve your app marketing. Um, you're going to be able to target the right gaming motivations um, in your ad creatives and rework your ads to appeal to reasons uh, what, as to why uh, players want to play your game. So what you can then do is you highlight features and aspects of your app um, that speak to different genres, targeting more players effectively um, with your creative advertising. So here are a few ways uh, in which you can utilize your well-performing ad creatives um, to do this. So we've seen quite a number of successful uh, case studies of applying well-performing ads um, back to the game as meta elements. Um, here's just an example that I wanted to pull up um, of Garden Space, um, who basically have um, applied a mini-game ad creative back to actual gameplay. Um, another example as well um, is with Royal Match. Um, Royal Match started similarly with randomly popping mini-game levels, but they've actually now integrated that, um, those levels as a major daily event. Um, again, uh, another example here, so Project Makeover, um, they highlight the, makeover, uh, the makeovers in its ads and also in the store listing. Um, the game also starts with an actual makeover experience as opposed to kind of like puzzle gameplay. Um, and you can also see that Top War ads, uh, which is example two, um, highlight the merge mechanic in various different um, types of their ads. Um, so merging um, the, the casual cartoonish art style um, and this is a key uh, differentiator uh, within the top war um, genre. So, um, in terms of uh, you know what we've discussed there, uh, the results are you know pretty impressive. So, communicating the actual gameplay uh, experience seems to pay off um, from what we've seen. Um, as you can see, um, we actually did a case study with one of the leading casual gaming apps um, with one of their top performing video ads. And what we were actually able to do was increase their day seven ROAS by almost 50%. So what is it that we actually changed? Um, we added
added elements that more closely resembled the actual gameplay experience. Uh, we also made the videos more aligned with some of those motivational drivers that I was discussing before, um, which allowed us to cater um, to uh, you know, more of the excitement uh, and thrill motivations um, and also things like completing milestones as well. So super effective um, in terms of actually boosting your, your ROAS performance. So leading on from this, um, you know, how do you actually level up your UA strategy to maximize revenue? Um, and in this uh, kind of section, I want to focus on hybrid monetization as it is on the rise um, for, for a lot of companies at the moment and how you can actually use this to um, uh, improve your UA strategy um, with IAA optimization. So first of all, what is IAA optimization? Um, it's something that Liftoff has been working on recently, um, but essentially IAA optimization is a new approach to ROAS optimization that is actually targeting highly engaged users who are most likely to interact with your ads. Um, and in terms of the results, um, they've been pretty significant. So as you can see, we've had 11% improved ROAS. Um, we've had a 24% um, IAA revenue lift. Um, and we've actually also seen CPIs decrease by 22%. So, you know, really powerful numbers here. So the way... Um, uh, the way that we can actually do this, so increasing the quantity and quality of in-app purchases uh, with a hybrid monetization approach um, is definitely the, the way to go. So what Liftoff's upgraded model now does is we can optimize to both towards IAA and IAP revenue to maximize the volume of users um, that are engaging with your ads to actually drive more purchases. So research has shown from what we've done so far that users Users who interact with your ads are more likely to engage with your app and make a purchase. And in fact, the users who engage with your in-app ads uh, go on to view uh, 4.2 times more products per session. Um, and users who engage with rewarded ads um, are actually up to six times more likely to make an in-app purchase. Um, so combined with our proven IAP ROAS model, um, IAA optimization allows you to target both the highest spending users um, and drive the most engagement to increase purchases and ROAS further down the line. So to summarize on, on this side of things, um, unlocking IAA revenue, so essentially allowing you to optimize all of your uh, revenue streams, drive more ROAS um, and stabilize revenue. Um, increase in in-app purchases, um, you, you know, it increases the uh, quality and quantity of in-app purchases by using this hybrid monetization model. Um, and finally, it will improve campaign performance. So achieving your ROAS goals while acquiring new users at the lowest cost. Um, so adding IA optimization to your growth strategy um, will reduce CPIs and e increases ROAS. So cannot stress enough um, how brilliant it is. Now, being the salesman that I am, I've got a bit of a, a shameful plug here for everyone, but um, who is Liftoff? Um, we are the, the one platform to market uh, and monetize uh, mobile apps. Um, we've got a whole suite of solutions across our Accelerate business, um, intelligence, uh, direct, and, and our creative studios. Um, but Liftoff is currently supporting over 6,600 mobile businesses across 74 countries. Um, and we basically aim to be a, a proud long-term partner to any leading advertisers um, and publishers um, in the space. So, um, yeah, if you'd like to find out more, feel free to, to come by the booth or, or drop me an email. Um, but, yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate your time.